Hi folks, welcome back to the Plain Fun RC channel while we continue our update on the reassembly of the pond racer. So right now we're actually working on the bracket that's going to attach to the rudder and act as the pull pull. Let me give you let me show you exactly what I'm referring to. So if you look here on our hangar nine P3 and look at the metal piece there on the rudder, that's what we're creating. You can see there and you can see how it connects to the actual tail wheel. So we're basically we're creating a version of that is what we're doing. Now, as I mentioned before, we use two pieces of, of um, carbon fiber sheet that are laminated and epoxied together. Now, the reason why I'm holding the tail wheel in this fashion is because um, you can see that I use the metal bracket that's part of the tail wheel as sort of the template to shape and refine this uh, bracket that's going to attach to the rudder. And I also use the holes on the metal, uh, on the metal, let's call it the tiller arm, I think is what it's called. Uh, or no, not the tiller arm, it's the control arm on the actual um, uh, tail wheel itself. Anyway, I wanted to make sure we got the spacing of the holes correct so it matched and it did, and, and make sure it had a little bit of an angle. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. So you can see our bracket right here, notice how it has a bit of an angle, and that angle at the top is so that it, the, it clears uh anything any any parts of the rudder the most important part it's got to clear is just this little piece right here this uh uh the trailing edge bottom trailing edge of the horizontal uh i mean vertical fin and as long as it clears that it's fine so you can see when we go through and we uh just place this on here it's a perfect fit as you can see so that's going to look really nice so it's very lightweight and, uh, and it'll work great. So now we're just gonna go ahead and screw it into place and that should be pretty much it with that. So that's where we are at, at this present time. If you look carefully also, you should see a center line. There it is. You can just barely see the center line right there. That's important. Make sure you have a good center line when you're doing it. All right, folks, more to come. All right, friends, welcome back as we continue our update of the installation of the tail wheel on the pond racer. So uh, we have our pull pull bracket uh, for the tail wheel installed. Let me show you why it's important to angle as we move the rudder. You can see it's all about clearance. Obviously, we've got quite a bit of clearance on that side, on this side over here. But let's angle it the other way, and you can see it's the same thing. So had I kept those square as they were before, um, it probably would have hit it. So we've got a perfect installation here. It looks great. Now we're going to go ahead and put the tail wheel back on. Then we'll get our springs back in place. More to come. All right, folks, as we wrap up the tail wheel, we've got our springs installed, as you can see. Let me tell you what we did here. So we've got a, um, uh, you can see our screw here. Oops, on the bottom. Let me tap in, zoom in a little bit. There's our focus. There we can see our screw on the bottom, two millimeter screw, and we have two washers here, as you can see, two washers. Uh, we've got one sitting on the bottom. There we go. The spring is in between the washers. This is a, there, it's a two millimeter, two millimeter washer up against the um, tail wheel bracket. And then there's a two and a half millimeter washer uh, up against the lock nut. And in between those washers is the spring. This allows the spring to move freely. And I'll show you in just a second. The setup is uh, very similar to here. Although here we're just doing, uh, we just have the uh, uh, still two, two millimeter screw. Whoops, sorry. Two millimeter screw, as you can see, socket head. And then we've got a washer. Then the spring sits between the washer and the uh and the in the tiller arm of the uh of the tail wheel and then of course we have a lock nut so they're loosely put on their own just tight enough to keep the spring in place but but loose enough to allow it to move and i'll show you what i mean let's go ahead and move the tail wheel as you can see watch the arms you can see how they pivot easily from side to side and that's really what you're going for right there there's not a great deal of throw in 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 the tail wheel, but that's more than enough to turn if need be on the ground so that's perfect so we've got it all finished optimally what would would have worked best is that if the angle of the springs had been a little more had been a le less of an angle but uh it would have pulled more but th this will suffice this will get the job done all right tailwheel finished time for us to go ahead and focus on uh, hinging the elevators as you can see we've got our rudder hinged 
and uh, and the, and the uh, hinges are glued in place, so we're good to go there. One friendly tip when hinging the rudder, uh, make sure that once you've gone, uh, you, you wanna use, once again, the high saw, okay? And when hinging the rudder and the elevators, make sure that you're using the Loctite uh, tubes that, that you can purchase on Amazon. These are the mixing tubes for the high saw. The advantage is because they're long, you can easily take the hinges on the rudder, insert them part of the way, slip the tube in, the epoxy tube, be able to epoxy, put some epoxy on the hinge, and then push the rudder the rest, of the, push the rudder hinges the rest of the way in. Because you wanna make sure that you first take your, 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 your center rod, which is right there. Whoops, hold on, let me zoom in a little bit. There's our center rod right there, uh, our center pin, if you will. You wanna make sure that, you, that you're inserting that into the bottom of the rudder first, then put your hinges onto the, onto the rudder itself, and then passing your, 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 your center pin all the way through. Once you're done, then you can go ahead and push the hinges in. Do it that way. Don't try to go through and put the hinges in and try to glue them in and try to put the center pin in. It, it won't work properly, trust me. The same technique is what you're gonna to wanna to do with your elevators. Get, 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 get your center pin in place on the elevators. Get the center pin in place on the elevators and then go ahead and um, uh, and then slide it in. So we're gonna use that technique in just a little bit. All right, very good. So once we've got this, uh, everything hinged, then we'll go ahead and start putting in our pool pool uh, cables. More to come.